Hello everyone and welcome to the 21st episode of the OrcoCast with me, my beautiful co-host, Lord Val Gaming. Hi. And down there, Bam Bam, my beautiful co-host. Hey guys. <laughs> we are talking about today, Wasteland 3, as you can see in my background. We are going to talk about Avengers and I we are going... No, that's not Destiny. Uh, and we are going to talk about Double Kick Heroes. Let's jump in. Wasteland 3. Who played it? I played it. I played it. Good. I didn't play it. You haven't played it? No. It's on Game Pass. You should play it. it, it I, I'm ready. It's actually really good, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. If it decides to work. So I heard that the Xbox version is super buggy. Mm hmm. The not PC only, version, yeah. not, not only, not only from Bum Bum, but from a lot of other. So, just a little bit from my statistics, um, I'm currently sitting on 18 hours of playtime, which is probably one fifth of the game. And I experience a lot of good stuff and uh, a lot of weird stuff and almost never bad stuff. So, what is Wasteland Three? Wasteland 3 is a old school top down RPG for computers and consoles. I am not sure if it's on PS4. I think it is. It's yeah, definitely it is. on Xbox because In Exile was bought by Microsoft during the development of Wasteland 3. It is a callback to Fallout games, mainly Fallout 1 and 2, which is a good thing. And it has absolutely fantastic writing so far, a great story, and a very engaging combat system, which is still a tad bit on the easy side, even if you play on the second highest difficulty, but it works still very well for me. What, what are you doing when it comes to combat? Combat is turn-based. Um, it's a bit like XCOM. The new ones, so that means you go into cover, you have a certain amount of action points you can use, so you can move your characters around, you can shoot, you can move into cover to get a, or flank around the enemy to get a better angle, whatever you want to do. It's all, it, it's it's what you know, basically. It doesn't, it doesn't really invent the real new, but it does it very well. The interesting aspect comes in when you look at the RPG parts because you can customize your character extremely well. There's a lot of abilities. There's a lot of uh, yellow uh, perks you can use. And the, the interesting thing about the character system is you can not excel at everything. You have to choose what your characters will be good at, and you have to really think about the composition of your group. You can mm -hmm. play up to six characters. You create two characters at the start, and then once you get your base, which is fairly quickly, you can either create four more characters, or you just create, I don't know, one more or no more characters, not at all. And just look at what the game throws at you, because there are also NPCs you can play as, play with and take into your group, which is interesting. The story starts with you, the Desert Rangers from Arizona, going north. Because you don't have resources anymore in Arizona, and your entire group is on the verge of collapsing, and Arizona as well. Somebody promised you food, for your people down in Arizona. So the rangers sent out a group to help this person. He's called Samuel Buchanan or the Patriarch. He is running, uh, which state was it, Bum Bum? Uh, Colorado. Colorado, thank you. He is running the entirety of Colorado and he has trouble with his three kids. So you and your partner, so the two characters you create at the start are sent up there and the game just starts really when you are being ambushed by some rednecks 
basically. Dorsey, yeah. the Dorsey yeah. clan. Um, they're a bunch of rednecks and they want to kill you. So this is basically where the story starts. You're at a um, dam and yeah, you're fighting them. You're fighting for your survival, basically, in that segment. So you get out. While the entire craziness is not fully comprehensible for someone who's getting it told, I will say that the opening level is one, at least one segment of it, is some of the best openings I've seen in a video game. Basically, when you, when you finish the level, you're getting to a door, and the game asks you to want to open the door, you open the door. And then you meet Jared Dorsey, which is supposed to be a mini boss, but he he you you get rid of him very quickly. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Then they play a song sung by the same voice actor as Jared Dorsey. It's a more of a Christian song or more gospel inspired, and it fits the tone of this entire game so incredible well when you go into that fight and that song plays you know exactly what to expect from the game and it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful this is how you make your games this is how it clicks for me it's hard really to describe to someone that special scene but once you have experienced it you might know where i come from Right, Bam Bam? Yeah, I have to be honest, I didn't even notice the song. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, I'm, I, I genuinely just completely mi missed the Get out the song. of my podcast. But then again, <laughs> like the way I play games, especially what I know it's a lengthier one, I usually have a podcast or something going on in the background. So I don't pay that, that much attention to uh, music. Especially because I think uh, when I because I played Wasteland 2, um, and the soundtrack there was super generic, so I didn't expect anything here. So I just popped a podcast in the background and played the game. So I completely mixed, missed that song. Yeah, and along the way, after you finish the dam section, you head off with your uh, trusty car to your new location, which is basically the ranger's base in Colorado. And from there on out, you start building the base up. You start recruiting new people for the base. You're going on quests. You meet strange people, um, you meet strange animals, which I will be getting to in a bit. But um, so here is the writing has this good kind of 90s weirdness to it this this really good rpg writing that is so much fun like you meet someone at a stall who is selling weapon she calls herself tywin jones and she only speaks in fish puns but has never seen the ocean oh sardinely yeah yeah sardinely i, I remember that girl yeah see the writing already hits um, you have strange quests like finding a cloning machine and then killing the three clones of the guy who created them and then finding the guy himself. And... Oh, yeah, I remember that quest. That was my first foray into the weird yeah. mechanics, how stealth works in the game. Yeah. yeah, Stealth is also a component in this game. It works okay, I guess. Yeah, the thing is, it's like I do, I I'd rather have a dedicated stealth mode and have a skill check to pass rather than this weird uh like a radius of sight and detection time. It's definitely not intuitive as just a stealth mode where okay, I didn't pass the check, so that's why I was found out. Not I'm standing slightly within the circle circle when the enemy can see me and be like, well, you got found. Yeah, that, that's I think I think they tried to get away from the skill checks. I'd rather have the skill checks. So check. people still have a chance to pass the section if they don't have the necessary skills. I know you'd rather have the skill checks, and I agree with you, but I think they tried something new. It's a bit like Desperados. It failed. Uh, we can say that. 
and yeah but and to come back to that so it has this um wasteland has this mixture of um post-apocalyptic and sci-fi weirdness that i'm personally looking for i mean you're going to meet some strange fellows along the way um you meet a goat in a brothel a parrot that uh tells you you look like somebody stitched a cuttlefish to a how can you not love that parrot how can you not he said it and i instantly fell in love see it's like when it comes to writing there's like there's this there's this line and i think wasteland 3 just keeps going above and below it's not it's not as bad as i'd say outer wild outer world uh was it outer worlds or outer wilds outer worlds, uh, uh, outer, worlds. It's a- outer worlds is is a game that just tries to be like uh marvel qu- quirky and funny and it fails like outer worlds i thought was atrociously written wasteland 3 has moments where i just want to ask the writers what they were on writing that line where there was there are other lines where i think it worked and for me like i i that parrot is just above that line where i'm like yeah now we're just trying too hard i don't think they were trying too hard uh i think it works fine it's so far the only character i experience in that way yeah I, uh, like i think th- i mean do, for, fa- for for christ's sakes you find a cat at the beginning that you learn with a pack of smokes and it's called major tomcat come on no i mean see it's like that's the thing it's like there is there is no str- like there is no through line of tone to expect and then there is like there is super like it's super brutal it's when i'm thinking this i, I think this is like this is fallout through like again like marvel eyes it's it's quirkier it's trying to be snappier but it's it's just missing that because fallout was also really down to earth wasteland 2 was very down to earth at some points it knew where to play certain cards and wasteland 3 sometimes i think overplays certain style of writing and it just goes way deep and then when it tries to pull pull off something more serious it just doesn't land I'm not saying it's it's bad. Like Wasteland Three, Wasteland Three's writing is probably one of the best we got lately in RPGs. I think, like, if I had to choose to, you know, put something on a pedestal now, it's it's up there with Divinity, right? But I don't think it's it's as stonily even as it could have been. Because because yeah, that's the I, thing. I, like, I think you like it. And I'm just saying, like, that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, that's writing. that's okay. That's okay. Just just let me finish my point. I, 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 I get where you're coming from, but I think the game manages, so this is, this is just my... Just manages to... I mean, for you, it goes over the line, that's okay. But I think, for me, it just stays exactly within the line of what is acceptable. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. That, say that. Because this is also an art... To really teeter the line so much that, but you don't, you don't really uh, break it, you know. Yeah, they yeah, could have. Yeah. I mean, the parrot was over the line for you, and I can see why it's on over the line for many other people. But for me, it was like it was just that one notch because I haven't really found any other character like that in the game, so. I think it works for me just fine. No, because like when I'm thinking, because this is obviously uh, the original game, original Wasteland in the 80s. It's what spawned Fallout. Yeah. And even then, like the original Fo- Wasteland has really pulpy writing. It's it's definitely not polished. That's what Fallout, I guess, superseded Wasteland. It's how well it is written, and how how even it is tonally. I ne- I partially would put it up to because Fallout had a design like a thoroughly thought out design document and I'm not sure the guys had it for Wasteland. So I think that might be also like explaining how uneven can it be? 
at times. Yeah. Otherwise, like g game wise, it's one of the best damn CRPGs we got in ages. Especially, I think it's also its pacing. Its pacing is great. It's not too slow. It's not too fast. It lets things sit. Especially with mechanics. I think uh, what also helps is you get way more skill points, I think, than in Wasteland 2. Get more attribute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because even because uh, I was recently replaying, I started uh, another playthrough of Wasteland 2. And it's like uh, in Wasteland 3, you can get, you know, a, half, a decently leveled up weapon skills and then some knowledge and general skills. Whereas in Wasteland 2, you'd be hard pressed to get a single weapon skill and then maybe a level or two in another skill. Uh, yeah, I think I think the secret in their lights that they give you more attribute skills, essentially. They give you, I yeah. think, less at the start because you just start out with two points instead of three yeah. in every character. But every character gets, I think, from the third level up, every level one attribute. And this is where you can also put a lot of attribute points just into intelligence. Yeah. And level up the other stuff you need later. Yeah, because now I feel like I'm when I'm playing uh when I'm playing Wasteland 2, the you're constantly running into a situation where you don't have the skill or the skill isn't just level enough because you needed to level up something else. And here, I'm just like, I don't think I've ever really ran into a situation where I'm like, yeah, well, I can't open that door. Uh, I had that situation. I got back. Leveled up. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, if you're craving for an RPG, I think Wasteland 3 is, at this point is probably your best choice. If you want, yeah. want to play something new, you're done with the Divinity games, this is the game to play. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> Um, no, no, no. It's just uh, I'm, I've, I've read about the game, and you know, I heard the game is actually really good. And if you say, I didn't actually know it was on on Game Pass. It is. Yeah, yeah that's, it is, that's yeah. actually new to me. So I'll be, I'll be uh, taking a look at the game. Then I kind of like, kind of like my time is past those games. I think that I've played so much of those games in the past. I don't feel like playing them anymore. So. You know, I might, I might give it a try for, you know, the old times' uh, sake. I mean, it's interesting. Everything I've read about the game is good, so... I'll give it a try. I mean, it's free, so... I absolutely. I will. And if you have Game Pass, guys, by all means, just go ahead and download it. And, exactly. You know, by downloading those games, even though it's on Game Pass, you're still supporting the developers, and they can create more content. Yeah. Just on the... PC version, watch out because I had issues with the game saves. I lost about three hour chunk of gameplay twice. Make huh? sure on PC just run it as an administrator, otherwise you're not gonna get your game to save. Yeah, for some reason sucks. I got used to wrong everything on PC as an admin. I don't know I, where it is. Everything. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it to run everything as your ad, as well, admin. That's like, like Application, do you know what I mean? Like the applications that you really need to be working properly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, definitely. Like if yeah. I'm playing one game, I usually run it as an admin just in case, you know, making sure that everything is running smoothly because yeah, yeah, it tends yeah. to have issues. I probably would have, would be like 15 hours into the game, but I lost three hour chunk twice. Jesus so, so I replayed like six hours twice, <laughs> which is fun. It's a, it's a game on definitely. Probably. That is dedication. It's one definitely. of the. Yeah, probably gonna go back and finish it once I'm done with other stuff. Well, looking forward to the game then. Um, that's actually, you know, it's great news and it is great to see those type of games on uh, doing well on Game Pass as well. Uh, Microsoft invest investing on those, you know, developers and you know they can give them a little bit of a name. So that's I'm happy about. It. Then let's go to another game that was also released on August twenty eighth. Access. It's called Night of the Dead. I mean, Night of the Living. That's the movie. But yeah. So what is Night of the Dead? Night of the Dead is your typical DayZ clone. Mm -hmm. To be very blunt about it. I would say it still needs work. I played it yesterday with Jelly 4. 
three and a half hours. It was okay, but the jank is real and it needs more yeah. work. Uh, I looked a little bit into into it. It's made by two guys actually, so there are two developers. That's it. Yeah, no, yeah, I've seen you played it. Yeah, it, the jank's extremely real. The the interesting thing you can do is uh, basically it, it's 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 also kind of like. Seven days to die, where you build up your base, and then after a certain amount of time, a horde appears and you have to defend it. The interesting part on on that game is that it's more over the top, so you can like place really insane traps and kill the zombies. We had two swinging maces at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that was it was actually funny. Other than that, you can build a lot of stuff. You can build a flamethrower, for example, which I haven't tried yet, but I want to. You can create Molotov cock. I mean, it's it's your typical survival game. There is not really all that much to say about it yet. It's in early access. It's in Steam. Mm -hmm. It's 20 euros. It isn't that bad, but it needs work. But I can see the potential. I really can. Uh... Does it have any stand sorry, does it have any standout mechanics of its own? Or is it just a survival with zombies? Um I think that the traps are the main draw here. Okay. So because they're really over the top. Mm -hmm. Just just imagine playing uh what what was that PS4 PS3, PS4 game called? Where you set the traps and defend against demon waves. Oh, tra no. oh, yeah, uh, orcs must die. No, not orcs must die. Trapped? Yes, that's PS2, and that's a predecessor. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the fourth part in the series. Deception. Deception, thank you. Yes, Deception, exactly. Deception 4. Imagine it like Deception 4, in a way. Okay. Just a survival game, and that's why... It really interests, or why I was really interested, because the, like I said, the traps are so over the top and so funny. Mm -hmm. They just need to get everything to properly. Okay. I hope they can manage to do that before it gets abandoned again in early access and nobody gives a thing about it, a damn about it, in a few months. Yeah, I think that there's a fine line with early access games where... Yeah. You kind of want to take your time, make sure it's not buggy, it works, it has everything you want it to have, but at the same time, you don't want to languish in early access for too long, otherwise people are just going to forget. For example, one, one of the things we encountered was that I had to select the region from my Steam account directly where I wanted to play. Right. So as a as a down there there is an option where you can select your download server where you download your games from, and I had to select US East to play with Jelly, so I can't find her server because she's based in US East. So yeah, that's that was a thing. Looks I'm like. saying it just yeah, it looks like it yeah that because I remember like the one image I remember from you watching you play it was that zombie stuck midair. In a doorway, <laughs> slashing. I'm like, okay, all right, yeah. That's that's basically it. That is my gaming experience this week. So, what have you guys been up to? I heard something about a game, a small release called Avengers. <laughs> a small release. <laughs> yeah, never never heard of that franchise before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Marvel Avengers. Um, well, I'm actually glad to say that um, the game has pleasantly surprised me quite a lot. And I was wrong about many things uh, about the game, actually. The game is absolutely... How can I explain it? The game is not as predatory as... we. Well, I mean, not as we thought. It still is. It still is a little bit predatory and still has, you know, its things. So it's, uh, you know, nothing different from what other games do. You know what I mean? You know, it's got the skins, which you can, you have to pay for. And then 
you go, um, you know, the pricing of the skins is about, I would say, about $10. Um, it's it very similar. The pricing is very similar to uh, being comparing it to, sim basically, comparing it to... Um, so it's... Uh, uh, Apex, I, I was like, is it uh, monetized essentially as a Ubisoft game, like Ghost Recon or The Division? Where you can yeah. get stuff, yeah. Okay. You can get well. It's it's only it's only good. Um, it's not going to be obviously powered up or anything like that. Everything yeah, no, no. You can you, level you, up. You, it's going to be cosmetics. Yeah, because Ubisoft games don't have usually stuff like that either. It's just skins, especially like at least from what I know, because I played Wildlands and Division. Yeah. So yeah. So basically the same thing, yes. Uh, you know, the pricing of the skins, I would say more or less is the pricing of a skin on, uh, you know, comparing, you know, the price of the, you know, the coin, the currency on on Marvel Avengers and real money, I would say, you know, it's price similar to Apex, uh, about, you know, $10 for a skin more or less, you know, depending on the skin you're getting. There is a ton of skins, you know, you get a ton of skins within the game anyway. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's gonna be those specific ones, you know, the classic from this comic or that comic. I mean, I'm not I mean to Marvel, but I'm not an expert. Um, I'm really not an expert on everything. But um, yeah, they got you know this this kind of like you know cute little things here and there, um, which is everything cosmetic and the game plays uh, absolutely amazing. You know, I was actually completely wrong about the uh, progression system on the characters. While you can still pay for them, okay. So the game, as the game came out officially, the game has six different characters at the moment. They have Thor, they have uh, uh, Miss Marvel, and then they have uh, Hulk, uh, Captain America, uh, Iron Man, and uh, which one is the other one? The Stretching and Girl. Yes, uh, yeah, but Black Widow. Black oh, Widow is the last Black one. Widow. Uh, oh, yeah. So basically, they have six characters. Okay, so what happens is on each one of the characters, you have a individual, um, like, season pass. Okay, so that season pass <laughs> is not paid for. It's completely free. Okay. It's completely free. Everything oh, is wow. free. And they stated it's free. Everything is free, one, one by one. But there, there's a catch. Obviously, it's a catch. If you want that, like, it's not really as we don't really know if it's a season pass or not because it doesn't really show as a season pass. It shows as a progression, like it's called the challenge card. Okay, it shows like a a, a part of progression. Okay, so basically you have the challenge cards and you have like uh, I don't know, I think it's like forty levels, forty different levels on your challenge card. So what you have is basically on that challenge card, the the one shoot up you have like challenges, uh, weekly challenges and daily challenges. The more challenges you do, the more basically you know you earn and the faster you progress towards those uh, you know towards that hero card. So it's it's basically like a season pass with a point system. Okay, so you finish your daily, you get one point or you get two points, and you finish your weekly, you get three or five points. Basically, that's uh, you know the basics of it. You actually get the currency that you pay for with the challenge card on each character. So you can you can mass amount or like you can get a good amount of those you know points that you have to pay for. So basically, what happens is, uh, let's say, I don't know how that's going to work because obviously I'm not into, you know, I mean, I know I've read about the game, but Square Enix hasn't mentioned this. We don't know if these challenge cards are going to go away at some point. It's going to be like a season pass and then it's going to go away every, I don't know, three, four months. And then there's a new one going to come in or something like that. I don't really know if that's the case. Or that is a season pass for that character forever. Okay, so you got like all the time that you want. If you want to progress towards the end, if because you want the latest, you know, the last skin on level forty, and this is the only one that you want, you can pay to progress on the levels. 
you can pay to progress on, you know, from level one to level 40 if you want, or two, three, four, five, and so on. That is good. And I thought that was going to be paid and it was going to be like a seasonal content, you know, kind of thing. And you had to pay for it. Like I said, again, like we don't really know if that's going to be seasonal or not. If it's not seasonal, that's really good. If it's not seasonal, it's not good, but it's a business move. If you want to have each one of the things for each one of the characters that it's going to take you, it's going to take you a lot of time. It's not easy. Uh, I progress towards, I think it's, uh, I'm on level six and I've played with Thor. Like I've done the weekly and done the dailies uh, for like four days in a row. And I'm only level six. If it's going to go away, that means they're going to push you to finish up that, that, that challenge card because you will want to have to finish the entire thing. We're not sure what's going to happen there, but yeah. Uh, that challenge card is per character. You have one per character. So you have to do it. You do it with Thor. You can do it with uh, Captain America and you can do it with Iron Man, whatever you know, your character is. You do your challenges for your specific character. The more challenges you do, uh, the faster you, um, you know, you level up. There's only two challenges, two dailies and two weeklies. That's all the choices you get. Two dailies and two weeklies, and that's all you can do. Uh, other than that, obviously what you can do, uh, if you're doing dailies, for example, if you do your daily uh, rotation, you can do the, your daily rotation with one character, and then when, once you finish it, you jump onto the next character and finish your daily rotation and you get more points. If you want to like faster, you know, make it faster to level up, you know, to progress towards that challenge card, which is like the season pass per character. I hope it's gonna stay. There is no dates on the, you know, you go into the challenge card, there is no, you know, my T minus 30 days or whatever it is uh, that usually happens on the season passes and all of that. So I think it's there to stay and it's going to stay there forever. So hopefully that's the case. That is the challenge card that I thought that was going to be paid for and I was wrong. I'm glad I was wrong because as per character, everything's free. Absolutely everything. And you get skins, you get uh, uh, like real monetization, you know, coins, you get other type of coins, you get materials, you get, because uh, remember this game is not a one, you know, pick up the controller, play the game, put it down and that's it. No, no, no. This game is about grind, come back and do missions and uh, materials and grind and collect and all of that. So it's a grind. It's like you put destiny and I don't know, like God of War and they have a baby and it's Marvel Avengers, basically. It yeah, this fight, it fights like this. It fights like, you know, God of War and it's third person like God of War, but then it's got the heavy grind from destiny. Yeah, it's... um. I because uh, I just I only play the beta, but the combat feels like a really light, like character action game, with it's very few good. combos. It's it's easy enough. It's because they have to mash up so many styles. Because uh -huh. say Iron Man also has shooting, flying, whatever. Yeah. Um, and everyone everyone has uh attacks. The style of the gameplay feels a lot like Warframe. It's do missions, collect resources, come back, upgrade your gear, whatever. Yeah. The only thing I feel really weirded about weirded out by is like the context of all of it, because you also have Iron Man, who's supposed to be the richest man in the world of Marvel, and mm -hmm. he's out there grinding for resources. Obviously, you can't really. Uh, no, I'm saying uh, like all I'm saying is like the theming is a bit off. I chosen. understand, yeah, but you, you can't really like analyze everything. Obviously, you know they well, all the like just robots did. and everything. You know, like, they they coming they coming together and they're fighting. You know, they get obviously the story is really good, and you will see what happens. I'm just gonna say like I've watched what I could because I'm not gonna play it. To me, it looks like it. I'm gonna say it looks better than the beta. The beta looked atrocious. It, it is was, much better. It is it's, much better. It's the technical the technical aspect has been upgraded. It's working. I think the monetization aspect was a looks by by the look of, by the it seems at least because there is no like concrete data if it's seasonal or whatever. I think it's also a bit of a. I don't think it a, is because that would be really really difficult to keep. No up no with. no. Just let me, finish my, thing let, let me finish my idea because I'm thinking that they seen all the negative feedback they got from Probably. the beta. 
-hmm. And they're like, okay, we can't do that. Otherwise, we're not even going to sell. So I think a lot of it is backpedaling. We're probably not going to see... I wouldn't expect to see it be being seasonal because then people will be like, okay, what the hell? Even even if it was seasonal, that would be difficult to keep up with because there is yeah, a yeah. lot of skins. A yeah, lot so, of so I think, yeah, and, so I think it's going to be... And stuff, so it will be extremely difficult to keep up with uh, yeah. all that stuff. In, in, now that we're talking about skins and stuff, there is skins and emotes for the free currency. There is a free currency that you earn in-game. There is two types yeah. of currency. Uh, there is a paid for currency, which is called credits. The yeah. credit is what you pay for. And basically, a skin is, you know, an emote is similar, very similar priced as what would be a, a skin on a character on Apex or a skin on a weapon on Apex or something yeah. like that. And then you get your units. Units is like the other currency. The units is what you earn in game by opening chests, by finishing uh, bounties, by finishing quests and stuff like that. So you earn that currency. So the units you can use, there's a vendor of units where you can go and purchase skins. There's skins on units. There's skins that are actually on the marketplace that are paid with or with units as well. Mm-hmm. So it's well, it's very well thought out because I would say it's not back paddling. And I'm going to explain why, because that it's already in the game and it's balanced out so well that not even Destiny got it right at the first time, and they do. And there is a no. massive difference there. Like, no. the, the amount of, uh, you know, the units, the amount of the free, you know, free in-game currency to pay for that skin based on the marketplace, it takes some hours, but it's not impossible to get. You get what I mean? Yeah. No, it, I... Like, you can grind for it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you got you have the option of grinding for it and it's not crazy. It's not crazy. I mean, it took me one of the skins that I actually wanted, uh, Thor, you know, the version of Thor, the, the god and the, you know, the the Asgard king and you know, kind of like a skin of it. I wanted to buy it, and this is the most expensive thing in the whole marketplace. And it took me, what is it, three and a half days to get it. Yeah. No, so, no, no, like what I was saying. It, it, it's kind of okay. With the backpedaling, I think it changed before they released the game. And this this balancing is not hard to do when you look at games like, I think Warframe does it really well. There, you can't really earn the currency, but mm-hmm. you can trade with other players for the currency. And it's not hard to get. Okay. And the stuff you can buy rather cheaply, what you need. So I think they look similar to that. It's like, okay, we don't have player trading. So we need a different way how to get players to get it and okay. in a decent amount where they don't spend like weeks grinding for it. Mm-hmm. Because they, there is the, then you, you're looking at the same debacle that was the Star Wars Battlefront 2 when, where it was like, okay, if you're, yeah. not, if you're not paying, it's like 1,200 hours to unlock something. Exactly. That was very, very bad in general. And this one feels a lot better yeah. in regards of that, you know, because they actually are, you know, kind of like, it's a well balance. I think, uh, you know, three and a half days, you know, a few hours, I would say about, I don't know, uh, let's say 30, 35 hours, 40 hours, maybe of grinding for a game rewards you with a skin that you would pay otherwise for it. I think it's a good balance. It's not too much. It's not too excessive. It's not too small. You know, there, there is a very good balance there. And I think, you know, that's really difficult to get right. Because Destiny is, yeah. even as of today, Destiny hasn't even got it right. And Destiny has been going on for six years. Yeah. And they can't get it right. Somehow. They got it right right off the get-go, which is a really good thing. And also, the, um, you know, moving on from the skins and everything. So basically, that's the, that's, that, those were my worries of the game. Not the gameplay, because the gameplay, like you said, you know, it feels smooth. You know, it's a fighting, it's a hack and slash. You know, you smack people with... You know your favorite, yeah. you know, uh, superhero, which you know everyone loves it. Yeah, the gameplay, sure. the gameplay is a strong point of this game. From what I've played, it seems what 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 plays into its cards is it doesn't overcomplicate things. It's mm-hmm. it's super okay. easy. It's like if you want to play as like a smashy guy, Hulk. The only thing I'd like more is. Because in the beta you couldn't really swap skills, and we're not sure if there is like you can have more skills. Yeah, yeah, there is a, like that. That's exactly what I was going to say. Now, 
it's basic, but then it gets really in depth on the full game. And the beta was very basic. Now, when you get the full game and you get into the same character, you have to unlock different. There is like three different trees within the trees. There is three different trees inside those trees, which you have to yeah. select, you know, mix and match okay. abilities. Some it's of them will give you like, you know, uh, give you back some of like health when you do a certain attack or okay. some of them will make your throwable faster or it will do more damage or it will make, I don't know, like Thor, it will make like crash and, you know, sparks all over the place. You start mix and matching all of that and there is very in depth. You can do builds, like for real builds on the game. Okay, with so... The gear in conjunction with the skills. So is it, do the skills, are there some like active skills that you can unlock or is it mostly just x percent plus minus x percent negative effect or something there like that three different types there is once active skills which will make your character do different things if you press a button on a certain point yeah and it will unlock a different ability and a different you know like maybe uh, on thought you can unlock a spinning uh, you know hammer that starts doing out of damage you can unlock that from one of the skills and then they, there's like three different, you know, the primaries. The primary basically uh, is the first uh, column. Okay, so the primary has like four different, you know, trees. And those trees will change how your character moves. It okay. will give you extra abilities. Whatever okay. you have, plus, if you press Y at the end of the X, X, X combo, it will hammer it and it will throw it somewhere. So you okay. unlock that. So you can unlock extra combos and exactly. yeah, because I was kind of afraid in the beta, it didn't look too good because exactly. I was, but I was it only showed you kind of like the preview of it, just the, yeah. the first and couple of things and that's it. What I was afraid of was every single skill you unlock is going to be just like X plus what plus whatever, like plus 3% to damage and like, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, then you get onto the speciality, which is, you know, uh, it's the second column, which has another four columns. And it's, that's when you start to get in, in depth of your character. What's your support ability is? Your support ability does this thing and it creates a, you know, massive, uh, you know, storm of, you know, lightning okay. all over the place. What's that going to give you? Okay. What choices do you have? You have two different columns and within those columns, you have three different choices. Oh, now, okay, so mix it's... and match. See okay, so... which one do you like. So it's like a modifier to your skills. Exactly. Say. It, like in so just so people can like uh, equate to something. It's like in division when you have your signature skill, and then exactly. you can choose you can choose a modifier to your skill. Say yep. like you have a med bag, it heals everyone in the area, but then you can have a modifier. It's also gonna revive everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So absolutely, what it is, you can go in depth within your abilities with your character uh, and like you said you know there is a combination of uh, so many percentage of uh, damage when you do this ability and blah blah and whatnot and there is another one that for example you know like i said i've been playing with thor all the time yeah. and there's another ability that if i cast that ability it will revive all the allies around me if someone is down yeah so okay they, they kind of like they have mashed up everything so well. I was not expecting this in the game. Yeah, and I'm I, personally surprised with what I've seen in the yeah, game. I, I don't think anybody was expecting after the no. beta, honestly. No. Everyone was just Absolutely like, well, not. this is going to be a trash fire. Yeah. And it's become the, quite the opposite, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, my honest opinion is this game is well worth. Like, I'm talking about from the point of view of. I have just played probably about 30, 40 hours. I've not played any more than that. You know, I have, like, I've started doing, you know, the kind of, like, after a story, you know, missions, you know, the end game, what we call, you know, quote-unquote end game. Mm -hmm. There is still a lot to see. Yeah. Because end game could be very repetitive. Uh, we don't know that yet. They say they're going to release some, like, kind of, like, raids or something similar. Quests are not short. Uh, there is some short quests here and there. Usually, all the quests that you do, you could, because there is a lot of side missions within one quest. You can go and do your quest, be done with it, 20 minutes, you're done. If you, you have a lot of side quests, you know, the area that you go into is a massive area, really big. Mm -hmm. And then you can literally 
I don't know, you can literally go to one place, you can go to the other place, you do like side quests, and those side quests will give you rewards and will give you, you know, more loot and everything. And there's like hidden chests and stuff like that. It so, gives you, if you want to do everything, it probably a, a, one of those quests would take you about 35, 40 minutes to, to finish, you know, because you get sidetracked doing all the side quests uh, within the same quest, you know what I mean? So you, you can have a good amount of enjoyment within one sitting on one quest. You can go straight for what you want, or you can just go and do your side quest and, you know, have a good time, keep grinding for gear and keep grinding materials, basically. Does the gear give you like any skill modifiers or is it just status, like uh, attributes effect? It like, gives you both. It's just buffs, yeah? Both. No, no, both. Everything. Oh, thank you. It gives you status modifiers, it gives you percentage of, you know, defense and attack and yeah, range obviously. and, uh, you know, defense against uh, these, because there is like different type of damages. So the enemies will attack you on a different type of... Uh, like, these are like the modifiers on Destiny, basically. The same thing, like Destiny, you have Solar, Arc, and Void. Okay, so these three different type of modifiers. So basically, you go to a quest, the higher your challenge on that quest, the higher, you know, basically, what you're going to have is on that quest, you're going to have uh, extra modifiers, and those extra modifiers could be... Uh, one of the damages is called Gamma. You know, extra Gamma damage on that quest. So oh, okay. basically what you want to equip is maximum gamma defense and then start equipping gear that is actually going to improve your gamma offense. So missions have mutators afterwards. Yeah, where... Exactly, yeah. Okay. You got yeah. modifiers within the, the, the missions and you know, it, it kind of like, that, that system is taken from Destiny. That's 100% Destiny. It's well, like, that's... There, is, there is one of, one of the names, it's, a, it's, it's farming. It's well known on Destiny. I'm pretty sure that's an older term from like older well, the symbol shooters. and everything is the same. Because because those things came. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were in Quake already, but I remember from Unreal Tournament. The the quest modifiers and everything it comes like literally yeah. from Destiny. The strikes on Destiny. It's it's the same thing. It's just yeah. literally the same thing. The strikes on Destiny. You get modifiers, and you know the more modifiers, you know the higher the difficulty, the more the modifiers you get, the yeah, more quite... loot you get. They're quite common in those types of games, yeah. But it's very well thought out. Um, it's very rare nowadays to see a game that has such a complex style because the style of the game is very complex, you know. It's a grandiose style, you know. It's a, like a RPG style, you know, where you can get your gear and you can improve this and you can improve that and, you know, modifiers and skins and, and, and like five or six different, you know, type of currency, no, five or six, no, it's more than five or six. It's like seven or eight different types of currency and everything is well balanced. They have vendors that sell the currency. They have uh, vendors that send the, the skins and they have vendors that send the, the emos and they have, they have vendors that sell uh, gear as well. Everything is in place. The gameplay is good. The skill tree are good. Everything just feels like this game has been cooking for years and years on end, and they have it almost perfect right from the get-go. I will what have I'm, to spend more time into this game. What I'm going to say is, as cynical as this Steam community can be, it's sitting at very positive. So that's saying something. Because the beta was mostly negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was negative, yeah. Because we all thought it was going to be very, very predatory, isn't it? And it wasn't going to have that many... Uh, that much yeah. in depth into the you know the gear and stuff like that and the skills it's quite the opposite <laughs> it's quite the opposite yeah. it's a very it's a very pleasant surprise to, to jump into a, the game that you're excited about and it actually delivers yeah it's an it's an early christmas miracle honestly yeah uh, it actually it delivers i mean we don't like i said you know we don't know how about you know I, if i had to to rate this game i would give it a nine out of ten and the one point is missing it's literally the one point uh they Obviously, it's got some issues on like on matchmaking and stuff. Uh, frame rate issues sometimes. Consoles cannot handle this game. That's no. That's that's, that's the thing. It's like yeah, that's obvious. There, there is nothing you can do about it. There's, well, the they consoles, should. The developer can. Maybe yeah. the Series X. You think will be able to handle it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it, it's tough on the consoles. This this yeah. game. This game like the consoles take a hit on this game. Yeah, I think that's the one thing I will probably like 
be very negative about is they should have made sure that it runs it's playable on it's consoles. Just, uh, it's impossible. Impossible. Well it well then in a console? Don't, no. They, they it, don't it, the thing is well, then don't release it on console. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, they're going to try to release on every single they're, they're, platform. They're, they're essentially scamming people because you can't play this. I played it. Like, I, you I, can I play it. I'm not, don't get me wrong. You can play it, but you're going to notice. If you're very picky, you're going to notice the frame rate drops. Obviously, you, it even happens. You, you don't on... have to be picky. You don't have to be picky. Well, so I drops. enjoy the game very much. And I don't have a problem with it. I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not knocking that down. I'm just saying, like, you don't have to be picky to notice if something goes below 20 frames. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I mean, the, what I'm saying is, like, you have to be very picky to, to be bothered by this because the game does so many other things. And it, obviously, you have to understand that the, the game is very ambitious and it's, because yeah, it, no. it's just like the, them, these people, Square Enix is giving you, like, because they don't it's... want to feel like there is not enough stuff. Like, there is so much stuff going on at the same time. There is four characters, you know, throwing lightning and throwing, you know, yeah. shields all over the place and, and claiming whatever. And there is yeah. enemies all over the place, enemies that do, do completely different things, which is very, very good and it's very important. The enemies are very different one from the other. Each enemy will have a different trait and it will do a different thing. And, yeah. you know, some of them are like range. Uh, you know, kind of snipers, and some others have range, and but they shoot you normal. And then there is, you know, the melee guys and guys that explode on your face. So, you know, they, you know, they have a very they, so many things. Every fight is hectic. That is like you come out and join it because you feel like you're a superhero. You feel yeah. like you use all your abilities, and everything is popping up. And, you know, people, like, f bodies flying all over the place. It kind of gives you that feeling because he's trying to put, like, literally at one point, there could be, like, 30 characters within one place. 30 yeah. characters. Even a PC, I think, will, will struggle with those, those moments. Yeah. The thing is, I guess this would be a long conversation, but one day we will talk about game feel and frame rate because yeah. it's, it's really important. It happened back then when we had Bayonetta on PS3 and Xbox 360, where PS3 ran at 30 FPS and Xbox 360 ran at 60. And one day, because it's a it's a way in depth conversation, we can have it at later time. But yeah, yeah, frame rate is very important, especially if you have a brawler. It's it's noticeable. Uh, it's not game breaking. That's what I have to say. It's not this war, but not game breaking on this. Game. I'm gonna say on PS4, it's game breaking. It's unplayable on a base PS4. Oh no! Okay, I'm talking about the series. X. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I'm not one who would invest. Like I, I bought a base PS4 because I can't really afford a pro at the, at this point. Essentially, now, like trying to play anything more recent on a base console, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I guess on that last generation, yeah, it, it, it will it's not be even last cool. generation. Yeah. It's current generation console. Well, current generation with the previous version of the current generation. Obviously, the newest generation, the Pro and the uh, One X, are a lot more powerful than yeah. than the, the you know than the previous one. So you can obviously you notice it on you know PS4 Pro and and, mm -hmm. and the One X. Uh, yeah. That's the one I play on, and it's not as well. I mean, obviously, it's not as well when there is like. 30 people on your screen, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all over the place. Uh, a guy flying over here, another guy shooting over there, another guy trying to hit you from, you know, behind you, yeah. and and you know, 20 other guys behind you shooting all at the same time, and you are, yeah. you know, no, no, I get it. Like, everyone. The game looks pretty. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, it's just yeah, the, it's just the gameplay a... feels so smooth, and you know, the inputs. You know what I mean? Like the inputs are so smooth and they work so well. That's what I'm saying. That doesn't break the yeah. game for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, for me, I had one second second delay between inputs. Okay. Then that's that's bad. Yeah. Obviously, that would probably be on the game one, breaking side. Yeah. On the one and the PS4. Avoid it if you have those consoles because it probably uh, you know mess up with uh, your console. Probably overheat your console and break it at some point. Yeah. Um, that's basically what Call of Duty Warzone did, isn't it? With more of the consoles. No, it uh, actually works fine. I played it. It broke my Xbox. <laughs> it did? Okay. Call of Duty did broke my Xbox. Uh, so, yeah, basically, abilities change. Uh, the more you play with one character, the more you progress with that character, the more in-depth you get with that character, the more abilities you get, and the more powerful you feel. You do yeah. feel powerful in this game which is the most important thing. You have to feel powerful, and you do feel powerful. It's not 
been many games that achieved that. Like I said, the, the, my example is Destiny because it's the game that I play the most. Mm-hmm. And it's the game that I love and I've been playing it for so many years. Destiny has not achieved that and it's been six years. We still complain as of today. We don't feel powerful when you we are max level on Destiny. Everything is still super challenging. Everything is still, you know, anything can kill you. Every little guy will kill you. Because obviously it's very difficult on, a, on an FPS game, which is a mashup with MMO and uh, yeah. RPG elements. Obviously, yeah. it's very, very difficult, extremely difficult to, to get that right. You get to max power on Destiny and you don't feel powerful. You take yeah. less damage but you don't feel powerful because anything can kill you. Absolutely anything. On That's this right. game, you wreck faces. If yeah. you are on, let's say, if you are two levels above, man, you melt people down. Uh, and your abilities, because you get extra extra movements and extra, you know, you can jump down from, uh, if you're flying, you can, you know, like hammer down to the floor and, you know, it's much like four or five people. So that's a progression system that is actually really good. And then your abilities can be uh, completely customized. Um, other than that, uh, then you have the collections. As you can, you probably noticed it if you played the beta uh, Bam Bam, that you had the comics. You remember the comics? Yeah, yeah. You were kind of collecting the comics? Mm-hmm. Right. So the comics, have they have gone even more in depth with the comics, okay? So with the comics, once you collect the comics, okay, <laughs> It's really good. Once you collect the comics, you get like percentages of your attack damage or whatever for your character. So okay. the more comics you collect, the better will be your actual character. So it will give you stats. Right, it's a collectible so that is actually relevant. The more comics you collect, the more stats you get on your character. Simple as that. That's a really good thing. I would have never thought of that. And I would say uh, after the skills, you get the objectives, obviously, which are the, like the quest and stuff like that. Uh, you got the Quinjet and then you have the, you know, another place that you have to go. I'm not going to say it because obviously, uh, spoiler alert. And yeah, you have characters, uh, you know, those six, char- six characters. The downside is matchmaking. There is a lot of issues with matchmaking, you know, uh, game crashes sometimes. Uh, I'm expecting those kind of things in these games because obviously stability issues, they will have stability issues until they have a proper test. A beta is not a test. That wasn't a beta. That was a full game and a short version. That was a demo. That's not a beta. We tried a demo of the game. There, there wasn't a full on beta. Basically what have, you know, you, you sometimes uh, like the enemies disappear if you use matchmaking with someone. And, you know, these things, obviously, they have to figure it out. You know, it happens on every single game, which is, you know, continuously multiplayer and continuously online. And it needs to be feeding information from the server, so or whatnot. Obviously, there will be issues until they polish it. I mean, the same thing happened to Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter was really good, but the online features on Monster Hunter at release was horrendous. Yeah, the thing was with Monster Hunter, they didn't they didn't expect to have like half a million people trying to connect at once yeah. on this on the release day. I think here they should have kind of expected a big load, but it's yeah, obviously they have to sadly, big, yeah. big heavy load, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Sadly, though, these days you kind of expect uh, an online game to be broken. Shouldn't be, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, it's not game. It doesn't break all the time. You know, it happens sometimes. Obviously, it's happened to me three times uh, in all, you know, three days, which is not a big deal, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it's happened. Uh, not the best of feelings, but, you know, they'll probably figure it out and, you know, fix it. You know, they already released a patch of about 12 gigabytes, which is, you know, fixing a bunch of stuff already. So they, they're working on it. Uh, remember, the game has been delayed already, so you know they, they obviously have to put t- more time into it. Um, apart from that, what else? A the the downside I was going to mention uh, the other downside is Spider Man is uh, going to be a PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, uh, no one else but PlayStation is going to be able to play uh, Spider Man. Uh, hopefully, in the future will come. I don't think so because it's a Sony exclusive and it's not. Square Enix, that's actually Sony. That's Sony holding it back and Sony saying, we're not releasing this character. Yeah, because they so, own the rights to Spider-Man, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so basically, that is a shame, but it's not a Square Enix fault, in my opinion. And then we already have been announced the one character we've been announced that is going to be a new character coming already to the game, which is going to be the female version of Hawkeye. Uh, I can't remember her name. I think it was Charlotte something. Uh, Bishop. 
Bishop, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, C is coming to the game uh, already. They have already announced it. I don't know how is that going to be, if that's going to be paid. You could get it with the, you know, the currency that you get in game or you have to pay for it or you can, I don't know, maybe get it for free. We still don't know how is that going to be because they haven't said absolutely nothing about it. Either way, there's one new character coming. Uh, I guess you will have to pay for it because the challenge card of each character gives you the currency of the game that you have to pay for. So it kind of makes sense if you can earn it with that character. You know what I mean? Like because they would give they would be giving you something free and then giving you money as well. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be a good strategy. Yeah, so they're probably gonna have her as essentially like a store purchase from the in-game store for the credits. Exactly. Or whatever is the premium currency and then I be would like think so. you can also earn it and get a character. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, obviously, I don't know how the price is going to be if they do that, but if they have a price correctly, you know, they kind of like it could be okay because you can still earn it completely free. You wouldn't have to pay a single penny for it. Play with other characters, earn the currency, get the character, and you can like, you get the ball rolling onto the next character when whenever they decide to release the new character. So in that regard, you would never have to pay a single penny for it extra or what you have uh, gotten already so uh, overall like i said you know uh, nine out of ten and we still have to see things you know uh, there's more things coming and uh, th these kind of games is a forever evolving world a forever evolving game and things will change you know regarding you know i don't know skills or regarding you know uh, gameplay or characters or monetization obviously everything will be evolving in this game so we have to wait and see how the game keeps moving forward what content are we going to get in the future uh, they said that they're releasing the stuff in the future for free completely free for the for everyone which is kind of like expansion like quote unquote expansion is not really expansions it will be like maybe some new area or new activities or something like that so i mean that sounds great but yeah, like I said, uh, let's see how the end game is going to be and the future of the game, you know. Like, this game is going to be... It's never going to be finished. If they are doing, like, what Bungie does with Destiny, what, you know, uh, Ubisoft is doing with The Division 2 or something, it's a forever evolving world and game, which is never going to be really finished. But if it continues like they have released the game already, I am actually very happy about game uh, like you said bam bam is a nearly christmas present and uh, i'm glad to see because i was very negative about this game about at some point when i tried the beta and yeah they proved me wrong i'm not afraid to say they proved me wrong just i think what i've also seen is people are still complaining about the optimization on pc so watch out for that if you're buying it on pc planning to play it on pc they they complain about the optimization on pc as well yeah 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 it's and just I, I, like i said you remember what i just told you uh, like yeah, a few yeah. minutes ago it's i'm not, i wouldn't be surprised because like i i know what the game i mean they trying to be very ambitious and um, by being very ambitious they have to there is something that is going to be uh, yeah you know it's going to take a hit and it, yeah. the, the frames are going to take a hit because he's and like I'm... putting so many things on the same place and I'm going to say time. it again. There is a thing like uh, such as restraint and technical oversight. So that shouldn't be happening. But yeah, because like there is ambition and there's there should be a limit where you curb your ambition and recognize that you, you it's not just possible or you're not that good at streamlining your resources that you should maybe tone it down. But yeah, just watch out for those things. Obviously, especially because I think it's a it's a collaborative effort between two studios. So I think mm -hmm. there, there might be something coming out of that as well. Yeah, it'll definitely come out something. You know, they probably like have um, improved improved you know quality improvements uh, on the game. They probably have something. Yeah, that, I mean, it it just came out, so probably it, yeah, it takes some time. Yeah, let's wait for the half a year of patches before the game's <laughs> actually working properly. Exactly. Well, probably, hopefully it will get there, because I think because it's made by Cryo, uh, Cryo Studios and the Montreal, uh, Eidos Montreal. Mm -hmm. 
the guys behind the Tomb Raider games and the Deus Ex games. They do really good jobs all the time. Yeah. So. Well, Mo- De- Deus Ex Montreal has to repent for the atrocity that was mankind divided. But yeah, I mean, yeah. They, all the studios have one game. That one game. Yeah. But yeah. No, no, no. Hopefully, this means we'll get more games out of those studios. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Or even more content for this game, you know? Like, if they can, like, make it even bigger, that would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, what they're probably going to have is just, like, uh, is a, what what I think all of these games have is a live team that's a separate team from the team that actually developed the game. Developing and the, it's yeah. a team... It's the team that does all the live content, mm-hmm. and the development team either moves on to making uh, different games or they make a bigger content expansions. Yeah. So we'll see how this happens. If it's say a small team does the live content and either Cryo or uh, Ados Montreal does one of the expansions, or they move to separate games altogether, and a smaller studio will take care of. Uh, Avengers for Man, now. The, the ultimate thing would be the, these guys making a version of DC. That would be Jesus Christ. If oh, DC were... could achieve a game like this, like obviously I'm more. I've been always. I've, I've been. I've been leaning all my life to you know on DC a little bit. I mean, obviously I like all of them, but always tend tend to lean a little bit more onto the DC comics. Um, yeah. Man, if DC comes with a game like this, Jesus Christ, this game is good. I would we'll honestly, if I was the head of DC, I would literally knocking on the doors and saying, "Listen, whatever they pay you, like, listen, I'll pay the same, and you just add it to the game, and or or, or do like a version of like Justice League or whatever." Oh, there's man, we're getting uh, Gotham Knights. Yeah, that is actually is, looks very uh, similar. Yeah. And also, I'm I'm more excited about the Suicide Squad game, which was mm-hmm. right up my alley. Yeah, but it's not because... really the Justice League. You know what I mean? Like, the no, whole, yeah, because... like this game is the Marvel Avengers. You know, like because the thing is everything. Especially the thing is when you again a bit of topic, but when you look at the DC lineup, mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's darker, it's less bombastic, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to abilities. You know, it's like you look at Marvel and it's all sparks, rainbows, and lasers. Mm. And DC characters are not as photogenic in that regard. Their abilities, it's like, okay, it's like, it's Batman. He has gadgets, but most of his abilities come from he's smart and he can beat up guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, you know, in my opinion, they could, if they wanted to probably figure it out and, and do it perfectly. Like I would, I would literally take this, like the, the base, everything on this game, the, the coding of this game, and just change the the characters, and just put DC characters on them, and it would work perfectly, perfectly, because there there is so many different stages. There is opening stages, there is clear stage, there is very dark stages, and it's it's just it's a really good game that I would love to see, um, you know, like. On, on DC characters. Maybe when we get the Suicide Squad, it's even better than this. And we enjoy it even more. So, And we'll be asking more of that. But I would love, personally, I would love to see the the, the same version of this with the Justice League. That's all. And if you can put them together, that would be the ultimate thing. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> no. If, if, it, if it happened, that would be like, honestly, people would lose their mind. I mean, it technically happened in the comics i think yeah i think i've seen wasn't amalgam comics yeah i've seen i think batman was it fighting wolverine or yeah, something exactly that was a thing that happened in the 90s i still have the um dark claw comic actually uh yeah. where they merged batman and wolverine and he was oh, fighting yeah. the some kind of weird version the Joker and Saber Tooth. It was really weird. Yeah, I think there, like when it comes to crossovers, I think I always liked uh, Batman. Was it Batman fighting Predator or the Alien? Uh, he fought both. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that was my one of my favorite crossovers. 
because it's I I love all three and that was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, otherwise I'm more of a Vertigo guy, like one-off series. All right, I think yeah. since we are now hardcore off-topic, yeah. mm-hmm. we can wrap this up. Val, you recommend Avengers? One hundred percent. Not what Avengers. Bam Bam, you recommend Avengers? Uh, as I said, I'm not gonna play the game. It's <laughs> not something I'd enjoy. I I recognize I it looks alright. I, yeah, I know. I was I was just kidding. <laughs> all right, then let's get to the last topic and let's go to Double Kick Heroes, which is a rhythm music game. And yes. ironically, one I showed you years back, and I linked even it to you. You linked it back to me a few days ago. Told me yeah. to look at it. Yeah, so Double Kick Heroes, it's a rhythm-based game that's based around rock, metal, and hard rock music. It's a... Uh, the thing is, it presents a story that I don't really care about, but the music itself and some of the dialogue and the references are quite good. So, just uh, for the story, because other people might care about it, it's a zombie apocalypse, I think, yeah. was yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah essentially. And you, uh, and you drive around in a car as a punk band and shred zombies. Yeah, uh, to so... Hard rotten. Yeah, game. so the game starts with essentially the zombie apocalypse happens just out of nowhere, and your uh, your characters are in a band. They are ready to go out on stage to start their tour, and they get out get get on stage, start playing their set, and the lights come out, uh, lights come on, and they realize, holy crap! Every single person in the audience is a zombie, so they start running. And they're waiting. Uh, they're running to their car, which is rigged, uh, which has rigged a drum set to to a pair of guns. And the guns shoot to the beat as you press buttons on beat. So that's how it ties to rhythm game. And you're in a car driving away from the zom- uh, from a zombie horde, chicken horde, and a horde of zombie uh, um, shark Mad Max raiders. There's a lot of things going on in uh, in Double Kick Heroes. Um, there's also what I like about it is more so than the actual story is the references. You meet eccentric caricatures of a famous people within the famous artists within the uh, metal music scene. Pretty much the very first guy you meet uh, is a caricature of Marilyn Manson. So that's fun. Uh, some of the dialogue is fun. It can be hit and miss. Some of the jokes just flat out fail. Some land. What's good is more so they land and fail. And the main the main draw for me as a metal music fan is actually playing a rhythm game with metal music instead of usually what you get with music games is EDM and tech, uh, electronica. And here you get to mash out buttons to, uh, you know, speed metal beats, and it's great. I like the music. Mo- uh, some of it is instrumental. Some of it you get with vocals as well. I'm not sure if it's the difficulty I'm playing on, but it uh, sometimes the button presses feel a bit off, and also I might just be dumb. I think uh, I'm doing because really I'm doing better on the more technical tracks. I might have to adjust the speed of the notes, and uh, it, there might be a delay in my headset when I'm playing it. So yeah, but if you like uh, rhythm games of any kind, I play them a lot. Some of my favorites are: I played DJ Max, I played DDR, I played you know the old uh, Jungle Book game. I have the Persona rhythm games as well. I play, uh, there is a couple of games on Steam that are written based, that are great. So yeah, if, you, if you're into that genre, I'd recommend it because it's something different. You get a different feel of the game because it's metal music instead of, you know, electronic dance. But if you're not into them, I wouldn't say it's worth it because the games 
more geared towards people who play these types of games and are decent at them at least. Even the lower difficulties, I think some of sometimes some of the tracks can be a bit too overwhelming if you're not sure, you know, if it's if it's a, a beat is on snare drum or the kick pedal, especially when it's a t- more technical drum solo. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> I just went off on a tangent. <laughs> Uh, no, you actually just summarized everything perfectly and my thoughts as well, because I have played the game. I have it actually since early access days. I don't yeah. know if they're fully released. Uh, I think on the Xbox Game Pass, it's already out. As a, it's yeah, not I have it. I have it on 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 Dark dot com, so it should be. A... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have it. I actually bought it two days after the. LA Access release already fell off there. No, I'm definitely gonna f- play more because I, as I said, like I was totally expecting, but was, especially when it comes to the indie scene within metal, it's very hit and miss. And... I mean, my my so so let's let's yeah. just get this out of the way here. My favorite rhythm game is still Senran Kagura Bon Apt, best rhythm <sighs> game that ever existed. It's the best rhythm game that exists and will ever exist. Oh, it's by Jonas. No, I, I'd say it's a like my favorite probably would be Persona Four, the Persona Dancing, because you can't find me on that. All you will, my boobies win. That because that game's soundtrack is just amazing. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's like um. There is plenty of rhythm games you can play these days. Yeah. And yeah, there is the Senran Kagura Bon Appetit. There There's something is something for everyone. Yeah. I, I definitely, uh, if you're on console, I definitely, uh, I think it's just PS4, but the Persona Dancing All Night collection, you get three rhythm games for a decent price, and the soundtracks on all of them are fire. They're amazing. Perfect. But. Double Kick Heroes is, a, as I said, if you're a metalhead and you want more and you like rhythm games, I think this is a great way also to find out about new bands. I definitely did follow some of the bands that are featured on the soundtrack. Good. All right, gentlemen. Well, do you have to say anything? No, I'm all good. All right, <laughs> then we are going to wrap up the show. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen. This has been the 21st episode of the Lord Val, where can we find you? Well, you can find me on Twitch, on Lord Val Twitch. Uh, sorry, on Twitch, no, on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Lord Val Twitch. And also you can find me on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Lord Val Gaming. I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, Lord Val Gaming as well. And also, you can find me on TikTok if you want to. <laughs> and I think that's about it. And YouTube as well, uh, Lord Val Gaming. Perfect. Bam Bam, where can we find you? Well, every once in a while, I pop up in your Twitch chat. And yeah, then you say, it. Just, <laughs> Then you say something snappy and leave. You yeah, can't usually, find yeah. <laughs> that's, and, that, that's my MO. Yeah. 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 Snappy serial killer. You can find me on Twitch, uh, TV slash the Orcasaurus, Twitter slash the Orcasaurus, Instagram Orcasaurus. I'm on TikTok. Well, and yeah, you can find me everywhere. Basically, where the Orcasaurus wages war. Thank you for listening to the Orcacast. You all are amazing. If you are in disagreement with us or in agreement with us, tell us in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from your perspective. We all would. And until the next OrcoCast, take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good day, everyone.